rather be with you. Hello and welcome to the Bible Tales podcast. My name is Lærke and this is a podcast all about knitting, about knitwear design and about anything else I happen to be making and enjoying. I have a few things to talk about in this episode. I have quite a few garments to show you, knitted garments that are all almost finished. Um, so more about that a bit later. I have some sewing to show you, so I won't talk about what I'm wearing until later on. And I have a few uh, sustainable bits that I would like to share with you. I, um, yeah, I've been thinking a lot about what I bring into my life, uh, especially regarding my wardrobe. And I find the whole idea of making a sustainable wardrobe really interesting. So I would like to talk a little bit more about that in the end. Before we get into the actual episode, I have something important I would really like to talk about. And if you're thinking, oh no, I'm just here for the knitting, I'm just gonna skip ahead, please don't skip ahead because people of color don't have the option to just skip ahead and talk about knitting. What is happening right now in the US, but also in the rest of the world is really important. And it is important that we talk about it, even if it's not, it's uncomfortable. It's not always the thing we want to think about because it is very painful. Um, and it's something I have talked about before on this channel. I have a video. I will try to see if I can do some kind of linky thing, or if not, it will be down below. Or I try to, yeah, I just thought about what, how I could, as a white person, um, how I could relate to the topic, or because it can be really hard. Um, I can never be in someone else's shoes. Uh, I can try, but I'm not there. Um, and it just, the whole situation reminded me a lot about bullying. Um, so I did a little talk about that uh, and maybe you can find that helpful in some way. Um, basically in that video, I'm talking about my experience with bullying and I've thought a lot about it that this bullying I could leave behind. I had the privilege or the luxury of moving away from those people, getting new friends, having a different life and today I don't really think about it. There's some, there some times when it still pops up in my head and uh, affects my mood in some ways, but generally I could get away from this. Now imagine if you're a person of color and you cannot never get away from this, this will follow you for the rest of your life. And when you have children, your children will experience the same kind of bullying or racism in this case. And it is just, it, I can, it makes me really sad every time I think about it, that a mom or a dad to children of color will know that their children grow up in a world where they are treated differently. And I know if there are any Danish or European uh, people watching this out there thinking, but this is all happening in the US, everything is more extreme here, things are not so crazy. Racism happens everywhere, and it is definitely also here in my corner of the world. And I think this is a moment where we have a chance to change things. So this movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, started in the US, but this is a moment we can all grasp to try to make a change and a difference. And I don't know who would not want everyone to be treated equally. Um, and I think maybe Sometimes it's also the idea that if you use the word racism, it's just a very harsh word and it's almost like an insult to many people. And it was definitely like an insult to me in the beginning when um, we started talking more about racism, especially in the knitting community. And I was like, but I don't say anything evil to anyone. I'm not. But that's the thing. It is not always what we say or do. It's not always about the racism that we see directly that it's very violent. Racism happens in many levels and many layers. And it is just so important to learn about racism and try to uh, educate yourself on how we have been brought up with it in many ways. Um, I think there's a lot to learn and a lot to do and it can seem very overwhelming. Uh, but the worst thing we can do is not do anything. So I really wanted to talk about this from my little platform. Um, 
because it is something even if I can change a few minds or help you see things a little different I think it's very worth it um, so yeah we can talk about knitting but it is just too important of a moment not to also try to yeah make things better I hope I managed to say everything I wanted to say about that uh, definitely something that I'm thinking a lot about but I want to choose my words very carefully I'm sorry if I'm not shining. I'm sitting up under the roof and it's one of the warmest days so far of the summer. We're well into the 20s. I'm drinking some iced tea or some ice water with some uh, tea leaves in. And yes, I have a few knitted objects I would like to share. Uh, the first one, if you have been following this channel for a long time, you would probably have seen this one. So uh, let me show you, this is the back piece. Um, this is the daffodil cardigan uh, and I knit this. I looked on my Ravelry project page and I started this back in 2017. So it is a long time with. Um, and I have no idea if it's actually going to fit me completely. Um, so the reason I stopped working on this, it's knit in pieces and I knit all both the sleeves and the back and then I was working on the front but I kept running into the problem of you see it's just like a rolled up tube because of how the fabric is yeah um, so I kept running into the problem that I knit the two front pieces but the these it's like an eyelet and knit two together or SSK uh, pattern depending on the side and um, yeah, it was just not matching up. It just didn't meet in the same way in the front and I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. And it is so funny, I picked it up again. I had to really look hard to find the pattern because I have had of course not left the pattern together with the knitted pieces. Um, but yeah, I picked it up again and I could see within like five minutes what was wrong. Um, apparently between one of these stripes I had um, I had just too many stitches, so one of them was uh, wider than the others, and that's of course why, why everything shifted. So this was all done, but I ripped it back and I decided it's time to get this, you know, finished. I have all the pieces, I of course need to pick up, I have to stitch it all together and then pick up the button band, but that's it. So it's a cardigan almost done. This is a pattern, uh, did I say it's the daffodil cardigan? It's by Helga Isa. And I have talked about this pattern in the past that I found it a little bit. It's your typical old school Danish um, pattern that is like very little information, very condensed. And then it says, do this and this and this. And then you have to go a little further and it says, at the same time, do this and this and this. And it's especially when you're doing the shaping of the um, so you have the armhole shaping here and on the other side you start the v-neck shaping and those things you're doing at the same time so it gives you the um it, it explains how to do the armhole shaping and then it explains how to do the uh, neckline shaping and then it's up to you to remember to do it at the same time which i think is just such a headache um and i i'm happy that there are new ways of writing patterns. I mean, sorry, my phone was ringing. I'm so happy there are new ways of writing patterns that are a little uh, easier for the, for the reader because it's just much nicer if someone does the work for you. And when you're following a pattern, you can just say, fine, I'm just, you know, following every rule when it's complicated. So. Uh, I try to take this into my patterns in the way that when I feel like it's necessary, I will describe every row. And when I don't feel it's necessary, I'm not going to describe every, every row, <laughs> every row, every row. Um, I think sometimes it's okay to say, you know, for the next so-and-so rows, just keep doing what we've been doing so far or keep repeating the pattern, uh, even if that increases. I think it's fine if it's logical. And that's why I sometimes realize that what I find logical is not what my testers find logical and so on. But this is why it's good for me to 
knit other people's patterns and I don't do that enough because time is never enough. Um, but it's really, I learn a lot from knitting other people's patterns. The other thing I would say about this pattern is it has three sizes. So small, a small, medium and large. And that is like so funny for me because that is really few people who can knit and wear this. Um, this pattern, I don't know, it's from a book, uh, it's an old photocopy from a library book, so it might have been updated, I won't, um, but I think Helga Isaias patterns are still not very size inclusive from what I know, uh, but I might be wrong, I haven't looked at any of her newer patterns or seen if there's an update, so sorry if I'm saying anything wrong there. So I'm, yeah, I'm just working on it in between my other designs and it's nice sometimes just to try to follow a pattern, even if this one is giving me a little more work than I would like to. So, um, and this is knit in a yarn that I got yeah, from Garnelsel. It's one of the recycled yarns that's called Eleve. And I think they have it back. Oh, God. I have too many. <laughs> it's like a mess. It's a mess, it's a mess, but I'm just gonna go with it. Um, yeah, Eleve, it's a... Uh, recycled uh, wool um, with a bit of a tweedy look and this one is an aubergine kind of color which is more when you look very closely it's like a black with red um, you can see there's red in the black but it just gives you this aubergine feel when you take it just like half a meter away from your body so from your, your eyes um, but i really like it and yes Sorry, I had to break off for a moment because my mom was calling and asking if they, we should go to the seaside later. And this is one of the benefits from uh, living very close to the sea. Um, I live on an island. Um, if I haven't said that, I normally say that in the beginning, but I live on a small island called Fyn. I mean, it's big enough, but, um, and it's connected with bridges to everywhere. So it's not, you don't really feel like it's an island in that way, but we have the sea very close in pretty much all directions. So that's one of the very nice things about living here. Um, yeah, so I guess we're going to the, maybe tomorrow, because they're in the middle of uh, doing hay, hay, doing, turning the hay. Yeah, so anyways, that was a little side note. Um, yes, so I've also been, I don't remember where I was the last time we spoke, um, I have been working on a few cardigans, I think I showed you those. So both of my cardigans are at this exact same stage. So this is one of them <laughs> and it doesn't look like anything nice right now because it has to be blocked and, uh, but I did the button band and I did a tubular bind off and I think that looks uh, very nice. I can try it on for a moment and melt a bit more. Um, and so this is the cardigan design I'm working on that has, I decided to make uh, two versions uh, as I've done with other patterns. And this one is the round neck version. Um, so just to give you an idea, if I hold onto the button band, this is, and it's a raglan construction. Now, the reason I stopped working on this one is because I don't know if I have enough yarn to make the sleeves the way I'm doing. So I have to add some pockets. Um, I want this to have some pockets here and uh, on both sides. So I, what I want to do is I want to add the pockets first and then I will see how much yarn I have left. Um, and then if I don't have enough, what I'm going to do is knit back to until here and then do a bit of uh, arm shaping um, on both sides so I will have enough yarn because this yarn is yarn I got at EYF um, and it's from Barra Mew and it is the Duff Stone base which they don't have anymore. So it's a very lovely rustic wool and I'm melting. Um, so yeah, that's why. This one has been put aside for a little bit because I have to put on the pockets and I don't feel like doing that late at night. And yeah, that's when I do most of my knitting at the moment. 
So that was one thing I've been working on and it's gonna be so nice when it's cold. <laughs> Um, and the other one is the sister um, to the, that cardigan, which is um, the same cardigan, but this one has a V, V neck, and again tubular, a tubular ribbing, one by one ribbing, and so the buttonhole is here, so it will be closed just around there, and again. It has a lot of ribbing um, and as you can see I made the sleeves straight and so it has a little bit of a bishop effect a balloon sleeve um, and these nice long cuffs and yeah so I don't know if I will this finally write the pattern with two set of sleeves so one that is uh, it has this balloon sleeve, it's not a balloon sleeve, it's just a straight sleeve um, with only increases at the end, or I will make it with, uh, with a tapered one as well. This is a very soft and beautiful hand dyed fab uh, yarn from um, A Knitter's World, and this was sent to me for collab, so very nice. It's a merino silk and yak blend. Anyway, so why haven't I finished this sleeve? Um, 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 um. I don't have any excuses for this one, except that I was working on the other one, and yeah, this one as well needs buttons, and once I have, let me get a bit closer, once I have the buttons, I will, uh, buttons, this one, of course, needs buttons, I was gonna say needs pockets, so I also have to add pockets, but for this one, I have enough fabric, um, Okay, I'm rambling. I have enough. Uh, uh, I have enough yarn. So, two almost finished cardigans missing a sleeve. Yep. You see how this is going, and then I had a new idea for a design, and I cast on because it was a really nice idea. I felt, and that is this pile behind me um, so today I'm going to show you everything I've been working on because I'm going to call for testers soon and I thought yeah I don't know I don't feel like keeping secrets anymore let's let's show and share everything so this one I have been showing you only I only showed you until here on Instagram and now it is in the sweater it's quite a, it's a quite a baggy fit. I'm not gonna put this one on because I'm really gonna melt. Um, and it's knit uh, from the top down. It's a yoke sweater. Um, and I need to. The reason I'm not working on this right now is I need I needed to block it just to see if the increase rate. So you can see I have changed row in the back, which I'm also thinking if I should change, but then the only other place I could think about would be here, which I think it's just the same. So I am not really sure if I should, where I would place the change of rows, um, the stripes. If you have anything you prefer, let me know. Uh, it has short row shaping, so it's uh, higher in the back than in the front, although you cannot really see it right now, but it has short row shaping. Um, so yeah, I was, uh, I felt the way I increased, there was a little bit of, um, of a, I don't know if you can see, a ruffling, ruching. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a lot, a lot of fabric, especially on the back. When I try it on, I feel like it's a little bit wavy. So it kind of blocked out and I don't know if I will change up the, the increase rate a little bit to see if I can avoid that. Uh, yeah, then we just need sleeves. So this one is knit out of, it's a worsted weight sweater and it's knit out of uh, some stash yarn, which is this beautiful caramel color um, uh, from De Rerum Natura. Um, Gilead. Gilead, I think it's called. Um, yeah, it's a very beautiful plump uh, French merino. Then I used uh, 
uh, Sneldon 3 ply, which I love, love, love. And this is the only one I ordered because I had the other two colors in my stash. Um, and then I used a light gray uh, Sneldon 3 ply. Um, yeah, so these are the colors and it has this very simple color work motif in the stripes going through the sweater. Um, I am still a little bit in doubt if I should, let me sit down again, if I should have knit this as a, a square, uh, like a boxy sweater, uh, with, uh, without, like a, what am I trying to say? Like if I should have constructed it, uh, not with a round yoke, but with uh, like square pieces. Um, if I decide that it doesn't work with the yoke, uh, because of the way the fabric acts, I could always remove the top and work the other way. Um, I've been thinking about that, but I think it blocked out. Okay, it still has a little bit of that effect here, but I think I can maybe change that by putting the increases a little bit differently. Anyways, it sounds like I don't like love this pattern. I love it so much. I can't wait for the fall to wear this. Beautiful. I just wanted something big and cozy. That was my idea. I wanted something big and cozy, actually also for summer that I can put on in the evenings because here evenings are cold and it's not like you can wear big co cozy sweaters even in the summer in Denmark. Um, so yeah, I love how this turned out so much. Uh, so I really have to, and it's so quick to knit because of the worsted weight, um, but I really have to get started on the sleeves now and just try it because I keep thinking, oh, but if I knit the sleeves and then change my mind and I have to rip everything back, but I'm never gonna finish if I keep thinking like that. So that was, uh, it doesn't have a name yet. So if you have any ideas for a name, this is my latest design happening, um, which is not true because I'm working on something else, but that is secret, so I cannot share with you. Uh, we, I really wish I could share that with you what I'm working on, but um, yeah, I think for the next uh, month or so I will be really busy with that uh, design, but this one is a good in-between thing, so yeah, if you have any name ideas, that would also be awesome to hear. Um, and I will make a call for testers once I have, it hasn't been tech edited or anything, I still need to be sure I like how it is working out. I have another worsted weight sweater that I've been working on. I worked on this some months ago. Um, and it's actually, I have it written down and tech edit, edited. So I think I will call for Tester soon. And that is, let me just see. No, 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 this way. It is this sweater, which is a very, so you see this one is a square, uh, square body shape. Uh, I don't know if I let me get a little bit closer. There you go. Um, it's again a really simple, cozy sweater. I wanted to recreate uh, an old sweater that I've been wearing in quite a few episodes and pictures and so on. That is a Gotland sweater my mom knit many years ago. Um, and not recreate in the sense I wanted to copy it, but I like the shape and I felt that was a sweater I always reached for if I'm just going outside or yeah, being if it's cold. So I wanted to recreate this kind of very simple, straightforward sweater. And this is what I came up with. Uh, I just wanted to add a little bit of detail. So I added this, I love it so much, this herringbone stitch that is absolutely beautiful. Um, it was a bit of a pain because it doesn't work you cannot use the same needle size, um, so I had to do a lot of, uh, yeah, trial and error to get exactly the the same uh, measurements. Uh, even if I measured it, it kept just it kind of uh, shrinks up on itself. It, it's a very stretchy fabric, but it's just so beautiful and. Ah, I'm so happy with how it turned out. So this one also has a sleeve. Um, you see a little trend here. And this one has a sleeve so I could write the pattern, but then once I wrote the pattern and it was getting warmer, I kind of lost steam on working on it, which is kind of silly. So I have to work the other sleeve. Um, this one is worked kind of top down as well. So it has a little bit of an interesting in construction and the sleeve is worked 
bottom up uh, and seamed on, but I'm, I actually give instructions on how to do both because I know a lot of people don't like working things bottom up. The thing is, I really prefer how a hem looks, a two by two ripped hem looks when you do a, um, I, I make a German twisted cast on and I think it's so much prettier than a bind, binding off in two by two rib. I tried making a two bila bind off in two by two and I don't like how that looks. It kind of pulls the, the bind off uh, apart. I really love how it looks. So that's actually why I'm doing the uh, cuff <laughs> bottom up uh, kind of sleeve. And that way you also don't have to work on the work with the whole garment on you. You can kind of bring a sleeve as you go, knit the other. So it's kind of knitting pieces, but in the round. Um, this is a very easy and fun knit as well. And it's knit in a beautiful yarn from, um, I'm just looking if I had it here, but I don't. It's, yeah, just, it is knit in this absolutely stunning yarn from Rain Cloud and Sage. It's the Homestead base. It is a worsted weight. Um, it's a little less than 100 grams in each skein. The color is so beautiful. I don't know if you can, you can really see because it normally looks gray on pictures, but it's a warm gray. It's a perfect warm gray. I think it's so stunning. This is a very dry, if you watched my video on yarn choice, it's a very dry, rustic uh, wool, but not itchy, just a little bit itchy, but not, uh, not so, it's annoying. It's good for thick outer garments and uh, but it's very dry uh, and very plump. And um, it's German Merino uh, from wonderful Ruth of Rain Cloud and Sage. Um, and she sent me one, two skeins uh, just to test out a few years ago. And I liked it so much that I bought a sweater's quantity. Um, so that is this one. Yeah. And I'm really excited to, if you watch my, is it my, January vlog. Um, I'm working on this design so you can see I was knitting on the back in January um, but the plan for these sweaters, the big heavy ones, is to come out in the fall so that's why I'm showing you now because I will do a call for testers and uh, hopefully when the fall comes comes, it's uh, we are, I will have the patterns ready so we can all work on some big cozy sweaters together. I can't wait. Yes, so those are my two designs that I haven't that I haven't showed you before. Um, I will talk more about constructions and this and that when the pattern comes out. I like to do that. Um, but now, if you are interested in testing, you can let me know. I have a testers group on Ravelry, and I also made a document where I put all the people who are like a testing pool, um, and I still always need testers for three extra large, four extra large. I can't remember the measurements, but it's all in my Ravelry group um, testing thread. Uh, we'll link the group below so you can go into the testing thread, read more about what I need from testers if you're interested. Both of these, if I manage to get, I will try to do a call for testers for the gray one very soon. And if you're interested, uh, especially if you're in the larger sizes, just send me a message and I will, yeah, I will be very happy because I really want to make my sizes inclusive. It can be hard to get testers and this one will have, that's why I'm saying it, it will have a long uh, testing period as I want to have it ready for fall. So I give you a little longer time than normally um, because normally I'm just always behind on things and really want things to get out soon. So let me know if you are, you could be interested in also the other sizes, but uh, if not, I will send an email out to my testing group and hear who is interested. I, yeah, I think that's how I'm gonna do things. Okay, a lot of uh, re reviews, a lot of uh, new designs. I just felt like sharing a little bit of, of knitting today. Now onto sewing. I have some sewing I would like to share with you and this is what I'm wearing. So let me just stand up. I'm wearing this cropped uh, tee t-shirt. And if I get a little closer, you can see it's in this beautiful herringbone uh, woven linen and, and this kind of yellow 
caramelly kind of, not yellow, but it's like sandy caramel color. And it is a hack from the Hinterland dress that I have made before. Now, last time I made the hint Hinterland dress, it's by So Liberated. I made a size 12, I think. I was pregnant and a lot bigger. Uh, so of course the measurement, I knew I probably wouldn't be able to wear it later. And now that my bust has shrunken back to pretty much nothing, uh, because I've finished breastfeeding, um, yeah. Uh, he, um, I, I need to make, I mean, needed to make another size. So I did my measurements again and I made a size six, even if I think I could have made a size four, but I just wanted to be quite loose and baggy. And maybe that was a mistake uh, not making the size four. I think I was between sizes, if I remember. Anyways, the thing is, uh, I really love how it turned out, but it is very wide. The neckline is very wide, um, especially if I put the shoulder seams exactly at the shoulders, it kind of goes down quite deep. So if I lean forward, you will be able to look into my shirt, which I don't like. And that just makes me a little more self-conscious also because I don't always wear bras, small breasts, don't really need them. Um, yeah, a lot of information there. Uh, but the thing is, I, um, I, yeah, I feel like it's a little too open. And I thought because the other one, it, the other one had the same problem, but I thought that was due to the sizing. Um, and I looked on other people's hinterland dresses on Instagram and so on, and they never seem to have this. It actually sits on them like here. So I. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong when sewing. I looked at the pattern and again, again, and I think I was, um, I was, I remembered the seam allowance was one centimeter and it's a little bit more, but it's not that much more. It's like five eighths of an inch or something. So, so maybe that's the issue, but I, I really don't think because I would have to pull it up quite a bit to get it to sit a little higher. If you have made this dress or you have any idea what I'm doing wrong, to have this very deep neckline. I would love to know because I would like to make it again, but just a bit higher. And now of course I can just do it, but maybe it's something I'm doing wrong. Uh, I did the small just bust adjustment on the bigger size and I kept that when I made it trace the smaller one. So I think if I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna trace the small one, redo the small bust adjustment and hopefully that will help things out. Um, yeah, but I just was in the mood to make something quick and I had the pieces cut out more or less. I had to, of course, re recut them. Um, I added on a little, oh, it's here, a little pocket, which I think is very cute. Um, it's maybe a little too much to the center if you look on where I placed it, but since when I'm wearing it, it kind of sits on the boob, I think it looks okay. Uh, I did short sleeves and everything else as I was supposed to do. The only thing I didn't do is I didn't put interfacing into the button placket. And I also decided that I didn't feel like bothering with buttonholes. So I just, because the neckline is so big, I, it's so short and I'm never going to open these buttons, I'm pretty sure. So I just kind of decided that it was easier to just sew the buttons on. So I actually did both button plackets. So it has space between. It's kind of half fake button placket. So yeah, uh, and if you saw my belly's tee, you can see that I really like this style. I should have it here. <laughs> so I really like this style of, um, of button down t-shirt. So yeah, I don't know what is, what, what happened, why it's so, it's not that it's, I think it looks ugly or bad or anything. It's just, it's a little more, it's not so easy to wear as I would have liked to. Oh, and another thing I did when I hacked it is I, decided to add a little split hem just for the fun of it, but it's so nice and loose. It's quite a heavy uh, linen, like medium weight linen. Um, it's from, I think it's called Linography, something like that on Etsy. I bought it a long time ago, but they still have this herringbone fabric. I don't didn't check if they have this color, but I know they still have the, the fabric and I actually just ordered some more in Czech pattern. So I ordered, ordered this uh, deep green and a brown with a 
like check pattern and I really want to make another hinterland dress and I'm also thinking that I would like to make uh, the merch, merchant and mills um, the fa factory dress but also in a hacked kind of way because I want the top of that um, dress and I might add in buttons and put the skirt of the hinterland dress on that so the bottom part bottom part uh, I don't like on the factory dress and I, that's on purpose to make it the, like a 20 silhouette I think the waist is a bit dropped and there's no waist uh, and that doesn't look very flattering on me I think so either the waist has to be higher um, or cinched and what I'm gonna do is have it loose like I want pretty much like this one then add the hinterland dress at around the waist, uh, but loose, and and then I just really want it for the the V neck, but with lapels. And I find I, there was a little bit high. I've been going through a lot of patterns. I also looked at blouse that I thought to use um, because I really like this look. If you know, there's this company making dresses. I will try to write the name somewhere. Uh, they have a dress. I'll put a picture, I can put a picture. Uh, they have a dress uh, with this v-neck with lapels um, and I just think it's so nice. Uh, and I haven't found a pattern that has exactly that. I found many versions and the th other thing is I want small lapels. And if I was a little bit better at sewing, maybe I could figure out hacking the hinterland dress and adding lapels. But yeah, I felt the easiest way would be to get the um, Merchant and, Merchant and Mills pattern, the, the factory dress, and then kind of hack that, merge it with the hinterland dress and get the dress I'm really looking for. Um, so I'm gonna make these two kind of dresses, I think, or maybe I'm gonna make two of that. And then I want to make um, a long uh, maxi skirt in linen. So I ordered some linen for that too. And I think I will make, a, it's another one of so, so Liberated patterns. And I cannot say the name, or I cannot remember the name enough to say it correctly, I think. Uh, but it's a skirt with buttons and pockets, and I'm going to try to make that. Uh, that's very nice, too. So that's sewing plants. And I ordered some other fabrics um, for my daughter to make her some summer dresses. And yeah, well, I will be doing some sewing, I'm sure. Sorry. And the last bit I really want to talk about for this episode is some, is talk about sustainable wardrobe. I'm sure this episode is already way too long, but I have been looking a lot into trying to make my wardrobe more sustainable and handmade. I don't want to have a 100% handmade wardrobe because honestly, I don't have time and I'm not passionate enough to find that fun to make, especially basics and stuff. I'm just not really interested. And there's still some things, for example, like I can knit a lot of the things, I can sew some of the things, but there are some things you cannot knit or sew. And I just been thinking a lot about what I bring into my wardrobe. So none of us are perfect and we shouldn't beat ourselves down about what we buy if it's always sustainable. But I think when we have the chance and the option and a little bit of time to research, it's a very good way to add in sustainable pieces. The first little bit I've been loving and I wanted to show you are these, um, these hair ties. So these hair ties are organic. These hair ties are organic and plastic free. Uh, I found them online at some point. They're from Hushu. Anyways, they are, yeah, they're really nice. Uh, hair elastics and I haven't been talking about them before I tried using them for a bit so the top one for example I used they're very nice to wear on the wrist and so far they kept the the shape and they're really good with my hair uh, you can get them in different sets of colors so this is the blonde I think and there's a dark one as well and a red red haired one and then they have some colored ones I think they're really nice so yeah I can recommend these now that I use them for I don't know, half a year or something I've been using them and I still have only used the first two ones that were on the pack and there was no need to use two. I just liked the colors so I kept started using two but really uh, so far they are fantastic. So I wanted to share these uh, 
hair elastics. Um, it's just a small thing, but if you can buy it organic, why not? If you can buy it plastic free, why not do it, right? Um, I think it's nice to add these things to our, our life, to be a little more mindful of what we bring into our life. I also have a pair of shoes to show you. Uh, I was talking on Instagram a little while back about uh, sustainable shoes. I asked if anyone um, could recommend uh, some, some shoes for summer that was sustainable. I had a pair of Allbirds uh, that I used for quite a while and I like them very much, but they're kind of a sporty style and I don't always feel like that's the style I want to wear. Um, all birds, if you don't know the brand, they are made from Reno wool um, and they also have some other materials now, but the, the main shoe that they started out with was Merino wool and the, the soles are made from sugar canes and all kind of good stuff. Um, and I think that's very nice and I enjoy wearing my Merino wool shoes, but I was looking around for some alternatives um, that was maybe more my style. And I mentioned on Instagram uh, if anyone knew some and I got some uh, I had some uh, brands mentioned uh, and I looked through all of them but one of the ones I had found myself and mentioned were the Muki shoes and the sweet ladies at Muki were so kind to send me a pair of shoes um, because they saw my post so that is the way I think it should be. So these are sent to me as a gift. They are uh, actually a um, pair of um, or the kind of shoes that are called barefoot shoes, which means they are very minimal. They have no sole, so you can actually see the stitching inside. Um, and I haven't, it's the first time I have a pair of barefoot shoes, but for me, it's like wearing sandals in the summer. So they are perfect for summer. They're very minimal, very lightweight. Um, they're a little bit dirty on, underneath, so I'm not gonna show you that. And the best part is they are herringbone linen, um, herring bone, bone woven linen fabric. Uh, uh, you see a theme, <laughs> herring bone linen. Um, and they are, the linen comes from a small family uh, owned business in Romania, which I think is so nice. And the shoes are handmade in Portugal. And the two ladies behind, I think it's two ladies behind the, the brand are just wonderful. Um, you can read more about the story and the ethics on their website, but it's a small company and th that they're sustainable is one of the most important things. I wanted to mention these because I've been wearing them a little bit and I love them. They're so nice. They're a little bit wide in the toe. Um, I don't know if you can see the shape is, uh, so you have more space for the toes. Um, and this is a size 38. I'm normally between sizes, but I think these fit me quite well. So I'm normally between 37 and 38. And they are the best with hand knit socks. So my big plan now is to make some shorty socks. Um, if you know uh, Denise from Earth Tone Girls, she has a video on handmade or a whole series uh, sock class uh, on handmade uh, shorty socks. And I really want to make some of these socks. Um, because they look so cute with these shoes. So I'm really happy I um, said yes to do a little, um, to receive the shoes for free. Um, and that's one thing I just wanted to mention. I sometimes receive things for free, normally it's yarn, in this case it was shoes. Um, I only say yes if it's something I wanted to buy myself anyway. So in this case, I actually was looking at the shoes. I wanted to buy them and they said if I would like to try them. Um, so I would never have said yes if I didn't like them in the first place. Uh, and the same with yarn, of course. I normally either I reach out to a dyer or the dyer reach out to me or the yarn producer if I do collapse. And that is normally for design or something I have an idea with. I also say no thank you to a lot of people, mainly because um, and uh, here in Denmark, you have to pay tax on anything you receive for free and tax is 40%. So I don't really receive it for free. I get a 60% discount. Um, so yeah, you just, it's not really the same. It's not receiving things for free. Um, and I feel like I would like to clarify that because it sometimes seems like, oh, it's so cool to get stuff for free, but I don't. Um, and I don't want to talk about anything that I don't feel is relevant. Um, now you could say shoes, what 
that's not relevant. But the thing is, I find that it's very relevant for me because I'm trying to make more conscious and sustainable choices regarding my wardrobe and knitting is very much a part of that. Sewing is very much a part of that, but I'm not going to make my own shoes. So I'm really happy I could get these shoes um, from the wonderful ladies of Muki. So thank you very much um, if they're watching. Uh, and yeah, I think I've been through everything. My camera is also blinking at me, that the battery is low. I'm sweating. I would really like to go outside and sit for a while. Um, maybe I can try editing outside. That would be nice. I, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. There was a lot of things to show you, a lot of new designs, uh, a lot of things I'm excited about for the fall. I hope you are too. Uh, I hope you are safe. I know that the whole virus is still happening, uh, even though here where I live, things are pretty much back to normal. Numbers are really low. They are, we have opened up quite a bit and numbers are still low. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's like I forget, it's summer. Life seems very nice at the moment. Kids are very happy and I kind of forget some of the not so nice things going on but i think it's important we talk about also things that are not nice to talk about as i said in the beginning 